So today I'm going to talk about Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Now I pride myself on having a pretty eclectic taste. I like reading all genres and I try not to pigeonhole myself into one form of fiction. I understand that booktube channels that focus on one genre tend to do a lot better, be it horror or say fantasy. But I just can't cut myself off from some of the absolute masterpieces that are out there that exist within different genres. I just can't do it. So I'm going to continue in keeping things eclectic. With all that being said, I don't tend to read the romance genre. Which is strange because I really do enjoy rom-coms when it comes to films. I've just never been that drawn to romance novels. I love novels to explore relationships, romance, dating, love. But normally they're one part of a greater whole and not the whole thing in and of itself. But if the identity of this channel is me embracing all genres, forms and styles of fiction, then I should probably, every once in a while, read a romance novel. So if I'm going to read some romance, I should probably read the romance that people like the most, or that at least has the most votes. So where did I go? Of course, I went to Goodreads. And I went to the Goodreads Choice Awards for 2022, which in the romance section was this book, Book Lovers. So I read it. And I'm going to talk about it because that's what I do here. But before I start rambling, what is this book about? We have three main characters. First, we have Nora, who is our protagonist and whose point of view we follow throughout the entirety of the novel. Nora is a literary agent in her early 30s. She's tough, no nonsense, loves checklists and works all hours of the day. She's a shark and she will do whatever it takes for her clients and her sister. She's hopeless in relationships and actually approaches dating a bit like a maths equation, figuring out all the variables before she'll even go on a first date with someone. Now, Nora has a little bit of a problem in the fact that all of her boyfriends have left her for small town country girls. They go out of town for business and end up falling in love with country life and a wholesome country girl, just like every Hallmark TV movie. Now, Nora is what you would consider the city girl in this scenario. If we're looking at the lens of the Hallmark TV film and book, then yeah, Nora is the bitchy ex who lives in New York. And this novel's unique selling point is that we are actually following the perspective of the corporate city girl, the person who is obsessed with work, who is tough and mean to those who get in her way. This book is almost peeling back the curtain and giving us insight into those side characters of those romance novels and films. We are following the bitchy ex rather than honing in on the handsome city guy who falls in love with a wholesome country girl. Our next main character is Libby. Now Libby is Nora's younger sister and she has pretty much been raised by Nora since their mum died when they were both quite young. Libby is happily married with two children and a third one on the way. But Libby worries about her sister. Now, both Libby and Nora love books. When they first moved to the city with their mum, their first apartment was above a bookstore, and they pretty much spent most of their waking hours reading as much as they could get their hands on. Libby is also a massive fan of one of Nora's clients, Dusty. Now, Dusty wrote a book called Once in a Lifetime, set in a small town of Sunshine Falls. It is Libby's favourite book. But Libby has a plan. Libby wants to go on a trip with her sister to Sunshine Falls for four weeks during August, the off-season of the literary world. A kind of final hurrah before baby number three arrives. She's got a checklist of things to do and she knows her sister loves a checklist. And every item on that checklist is straight out of a Hallmark TV romance. So Libby and Nora travel to Sunshine Falls and the rest of the novel takes place there. Early on in the trip, Nora bumps into our third main character, Charlie. Charlie is basically Nora in male form. He's quick-witted, he's a book editor, and he is known for being no-nonsense and very, very tough. However, this isn't the first time that Nora has met Charlie. Two to three years previous, she was trying to get Charlie to be the editor on Dusty's new book, Once in a Lifetime. However, Charlie very abruptly and rudely refused to do it, saying that this book was the author's worst book yet. He's not a monster, he's a big fan of Dusty's early work, he just did not like this book. So this quick meeting left Nora somewhat hating Charlie and his views on her favourite client's work. But would you believe it? Nora and Charlie are now both in Sunshine Falls together at the exact same time. Let the romance begin. There is of course various twists and turns along the way, along with a lot of banter, a lot of witty banter. I mean a lot, a lot, a lot of witty banter. God, I wish I was as witty as Nora and Charlie in this novel. I really do. So let's jump into my likes and dislikes. What I liked. It's fun. It's really, really fun. 
The writing is solid and moves at a breakneck pace. The characters are all extremely well-rounded and extremely likeable. I like that the novel just does everything right with the genre. It's different enough to stand out, but plays so heavily into the cliches that fans of romance will still love it. The plot is solid enough with enough twists to keep me reading. I mean, most of them are quite easy to spot, but I don't think Emily Henry is really trying that hard to hide them. I think Emily Henry understands that her readers will enjoy being able to guess 50% of what's coming, making them feel really good and smart, but also at the same time not being able to predict the other 50%, which will keep things really, really interesting. I haven't read anything else by this author, but I get the feeling that she understands this genre so well that she can pretty much do anything she likes with it and make it work. And fair play, because I mean, that is not easy to do. As much as it might look like it is, it really isn't. Emily Henry is very talented. So I liked being in the hands of someone who knew exactly what they were doing. So what didn't I like? I don't know how to say the next thing without sounding a bit like a dick, so I'm just gonna go for it and whatever will be, will be. It's just fluff. And I know that's obvious. It's a romance novel. You're probably screaming at your screen going, duh, Andy, of course it's fluff. It's a romance book. But when I looked at this one, when I read the feedback on this one, everything said it was trying to subvert the romance norms. But what it does by trying to subvert those norms is just fall directly into them. But that's what the book is actually trying to do. So it's not the book's fault. Of course it isn't. The book's doing a good job. I'm just not getting much from it. It's like an episode of the TV show Friends. It, that, Friends is great, I love Friends, especially when I'm eating dinner, I don't have to actually give it my full attention. And that is great in 23 minute TV format, but it is not what I go to reading for. Now I read a lot of stuff that isn't that deep, but it's normally ticking other boxes for me with its well building or just its plain creativity. So what I dislike about this book is it fails to connect with me on any deeper emotional level. It is just fluff. It's romance, and it is exactly why I steer clear of the genre. I'm sorry, normally I do a list of dislikes, and that wasn't a list of dislikes, that was just one big long rant. But hopefully that all kind of makes sense. Here's the thing, I didn't dislike reading this book. I read it in an afternoon, and the witty banter alone was enough to bring me joy. But it's just a bit of nothing, and it didn't really challenge me. But, here's the thing, maybe the romance genre isn't at fault here. Maybe it's where I chose to go for my recommendation. Maybe the Goodreads Choice Award was not the best place to look. That would give me an idea of what is the most popular romance novel, but not maybe the best ones out there. So I'm thinking that maybe you, Booktube, are the best place to go for my romance recommendations. Because I'm not quite ready to give up on the genre yet, especially if I want this channel to continue being eclectic and embracing all forms and genres of fiction. So please let me know what romance novels are out there that are just a little bit different. I still want them to exist within the romance world, otherwise I'm gonna end up just reading literary fiction that I already like and enjoy. But what romance is out there that is maybe creatively different or its approach just twists the norms in a really fun and interesting way that's gonna challenge me a little bit. But to sum up this book, Book Lovers, I'm gonna give it 2.5 stars out of five. It was all right. But to people who love romance, I'm sure this is a five star book and I totally get it. That's enough ranting from me. I just wanna say thank you very much for watching. I hope you are all well and I will see you all on the next one.